Hopefully the mic is working. Uh, yours will in three, two. <laughs> oh, great. His works. Mine doesn't. There you go. <laughs> okay. So my mic works now? Yes. Good. Everything works? Cameras work? Cameras working. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he does this crap to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just has fun putting me on the spot. How is everybody? I hope you guys have had a good week. I've had... A busy one, a really busy one. Um, I had a couple of deadlines sneaking up, so I've had to design a couple of pieces for various magazines. So I've got my pixelated palette submission done, and I have to get that out of here this week. And I also have one for Painting World magazine I have to get out of here this week. Plus, I have to have a design for next Saturday, which I'm already working on. So that one is, uh, that one's a floral. We're going to be painting orchids. I'm excited about that one. It's based on an old design a like really old design i did i don't know half a million years ago so uh, um it's one of my favorites of my old designs it just needed to be reworked so um that's what i've done so i've reworked it re restyled it redesigned it a little bit and uh, that's what we'll be doing next saturday so i'm excited about that one and um what are we doing today today we're painting uh cookies and cocoa I had to do another Christmas piece so and this one's got some fun little ornaments that go along with it so it'll be a fun piece to do I had a hard time spelling cocoa apparently yeah I thought he was trying to spell cookies and couldn't figure out why he was struggling with it but well there is <laughs> not side by side <laughs> no that would be the cookies <laughs> so we're um we're going to be painting gingerbread today so I made sure Bob was in the locale. So Bob is around somewhere. We'll make sure that he shows up for well, the you day. You don't even have your cart next to you. Not yet. I'll get to it. And, uh, but in the meantime, uh, we do have a shout out for this week. Um, the shout out this week goes to decoart.com. Everybody knows I'm a decoart girl. I love my decoart paints and my decoart products. And uh, I've been working with decoart for a bazillion years, it seems which is uh, has been a really great relationship. So I wanted to give them a shout out because they've got something really cool, something they've never done before. They have gift certificates available on their website. So if you're looking for a, a great gift idea for a painting friend or a crafty pal, uh, that's an excellent option to uh, go to decorart.com and uh, check out the gift certificates. They got some cool stuff in there. The other thing I saw um, on the website the other day, and it's also available at Michael's, which was rather exciting, was the water marbling kits are available, but they've expanded a few things. So now they have more color selections available in little sets at Michael's and on decorart.com. So if you've got a little bit of time, want to spend some money and buy a friend something really fun, go check out the gift certificates on decoart.com. You're going to love it. Oh, and Sandy is there with your discount code for decoart.com. Oh, decor. nice. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Thank TM you. It's twenty twenty two h 2 Yep. So that, yeah, if you use that link, discount code uh, to go purchase. Thank you. <laughs> and Miss Sandy, I hope you're feeling better, sweetie. She was still a little... Uh, congested and a little you know still a little bit of that um, frog in her throat from her trip no turkey? no she got sick again poor was dear turkey yeah she was in turkey oh. i know i got a goodie box right that's where you got the black tea from <laughs> yeah delta where i got my evil eye and right my, we my went pretty over scarf that. yeah we went yeah. over that last week um i did have happy mail this week what'd you get what i get i got myself something oh <laughs> still happy mail Amazon orders should not be considered happy this mail. This is know happy mail. Do you see this smile? No, okay. It's right. happy Fair mail. Fair enough. Um, I've, I've, I always tell people, you know, there's no need to buy, you know, a gigantic set of something until you've worked with it a little bit. And then when you discover that you really, 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 really love them, then, you know, expand it and go get the bigger one. <laughs> I was so excited. So excited. Amazon had a great sale on, and I got my Derwent Chromaflow colored pencils, a set of 48, because I, I have the small set, and I absolutely love them. These are just beautiful. I love how smooth they are. I love the colors, everything about them. I'm just over the moon. So, yes, I treated myself 
<laughs> I bought myself some Derwent Chroma Flow colored pencils. Love them. They're awesome. <laughs> so that was my happy mail this week. And then um, when we were talking about colored pencils the last time, I was talking about these uh, blenders that come like a marker that you can get these at Mar Michael's. These are from Artist Loft. I have several of these. These are fantastic. They, they make blending colored pencils so simple. Uh, there's a variety of brands out there. Uh, Derwent makes one. Prismacolor makes one. They all make one. Um, I really like this one from Artist Loft for two reasons. Uh, once it's a double-ended, it has a large point on one end and a small one on the other. So you can get into really fine detail and small, tight areas and blend very carefully. And the other thing that I like hello price point these are under five bucks fantastic price whereas most of them are a little on the pricey side this one is quite reasonable but this one works beautifully so if you are looking for a good blender go and check out the artist loft brand at michaels.com or at your local michael store they're fantastic sandy says she's feeling great today good i'm glad to hear it my girl has not been not been well so you gotta you know um, get to work on all those vitamins linda Safranco is wondering if you got her email in reference to gift cards no i haven't looked at my email this morning i'm busy painting <laughs> 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 i get up i grab myself a cup of tea and i came down to the studio and i painted uh karen wilson asks what does it use to blend um it's actually a gamsol inside a gamsol or a like so is it a product solvent? it's a solvent yes oh, okay Works best with, I, I've found it works with all of my colored pencils, so it doesn't seem to have a, a preference as to whether it's oil-based or wax-based. It works beautifully Ooh. and affordable. Crackle pop. Ouch, was that your hands? Don't do that. That hurts. <laughs> that hurts it, me. It, does, it doesn't hurt. It, uh, well, just, it hurts me. <laughs> the winter is really bad on my knuckles. I know. So. Stop doing that. I have to because otherwise they get stiff. Oh. Ouch. Sounds like arthritis. Mine get... Gee, I wonder where I got that from. I can't imagine. <laughs> Mine actually... My hands don't look like breakfast sausages today. That's, yeah, a, that's, yeah, that's an improvement. Awesome. <laughs> my hands have been terrible the last few weeks, so... Right now, they're good. Yeah, good morning from San Diego. San Diego? Sounds like somebody dropped a waffle on a beach. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Yeah, I know. That's just terrible. <laughs> So we're going to be <laughs> we're going to be playing with uh, some stencils today and some uh, I'm using some chipboard, some really fun little chipboard pieces. I like I don't know. I'm just in a Christmassy mood these days. Cookies and cocoa. Cookies and cocoa. I thought he was fun. Um, you know me and my teacups. Well, I had to go with a mug this time around. It's just <laughs> it's a me thing. I don't know. And I played with some dimensional paint, and we're going to play with some glitter and um, i'm leaving so there's a couple of companies i want to uh, talk about we're going to be working with um i'm using decorts glamour dust and but i also have a decorts um snow text writer snow writer uh, that can also be used i just really like the glamour dust that's just a me thing so for the icing we're going to be using either a um uh, paint writer dimensional paint and some glitter or we're going to use the snow text either one we're going to use the stencil uh, the one that i'm using is m277 which is the knit pattern stencil and the m242 uh, or m254 either one of those snowflake stencils will work just fine and then of course i can't leave well enough alone we're going to be playing with a little bit of chipboard from southern ridge trading because i love her snowflakes they're amazing and I have more coming, especially the little tiny wood ones. I'm in love with those. And um, we're just going to, in general, relax and have some fun with uh, this little gingerbread guy. I'm all prepped. I'm ready to go. Ooh, apparently Patrick's sick. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting for the medicine to kick in, he says. Oh, no. <laughs> well, everybody's either had uh, R RSV or the flu. You know, it's... Everybody's getting really sick this year. Well, it's funny because flu disappeared for like a year and a half. <laughs> it just disappeared. Nobody, you know, very few people got sick with the flu. But then again, we weren't going anywhere. Nobody yeah. was in touch with anyone. So, you know, it wasn't passing. But um, 
I, you know, all of a sudden, everybody's you know, masks are off. Everybody's, you know, back in the bar in the pizza shop. And boom, sick. Boom. Everybody's, you know, it's because we walked into a Petri dish. Yeah, play, <laughs> play in the dirt and play with sticks and drink from the garden hose. Yeah. Eat dirt, drink out of the hose. Yeah. Build up your immune system. If you would blow some of your cold air down to Texas. 80 plus degrees with 90% humidity. She must be near Houston. <laughs> It's hard to feel Christmassy running the AC. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I can see that. Um, we're getting some unusually warm weather, too. I mean, we had pouring rain here this week. Poured. Absolutely poured rain this week. And it was, like, what, 9 degrees? I think we were up to, like, 11 or 12 the other yeah, day. It was like... I think we're going to have a brown Christmas. I hope not. Well, actually, we're supposed to get snow next week. Yeah, not much though. No, no, you know, three or four centimeters. Yeah, immediately, not even yeah, enough to cover the grass. Rain, so yeah, probably. <laughs> Ew, I hate rain in the winter time. Yeah, brown Christmas. Yep, I hate uh, it. Make sure you say something about all the gifts today. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we have six giveaways today. Yeah, we got tons. We have six. Um, I still have a bunch that I have to go through, but we have six for today. So, um, we've got a bunch of goodies. There's a little bit of everything. So I don't know what's in each of those envelopes. I know that some of them are... Um, Tombow. Tombow. I know that some are Dynasty Black Gold. Some are Dynasty Faux Squirrel. Some are stencils. Get a surprise. Some, so when you win, we're essentially going to grab an envelope. I'm going to go, hmm, that could be. And then write your name on it and send it off to you. Because... <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you'll be surprised. So will I. I know generally what's in in there but not what's in each individual one because i wrapped them and then forgot to make a note that's why and stuff jingles and stuff jingles <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah so we have six giveaways for today that's always fun um i've noticed people have been posting that their their goodies from the uh from the live have started showing up some of our canadians really? have the, already gotten them yeah the days of christmas stuff is showing up at yep. people's doors right on so that's good i mean obviously canada post is like picking up the pace well, they had a huge hiring spree. Yeah, well, I think they do it every year. Well, they do, but I don't know that it helps. But <laughs> <laughs> so they're, the uh, goodies from last weekend's live are starting to arrive. So some of the Canadians um, that won um, have already received theirs. A couple of them messaged me the other day, tell me that their goodies had arrived. And uh, so things are starting to move. Thank heavens. Thank heavens. Uh Caitlin Olson said, I just did a Zoom class with Debbie Mishima. Debbie Mishima, yes. Mishima. Lovely lady. And we used one of your stencils. Yes, right you on. did. Yep. Cool. Debbie Mishima taught this really cute thing called Let It Snow. She was the Let It Snow stencil. That's cool. the one it is. And it's the cutest little piece. So Debbie's designs are adorable. They're very light, very airy, very soft and just they're so stinking cute <laughs> still waiting on my black friday order did you have a black friday special yeah 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 they're all gone none of it's in there nope no cool that's all the most recent stuff yeah that's all the stuff that came in yesterday oh oh my yeah <laughs> so yeah it was um it's been a busy couple of weeks so yes all of the black friday stuff has been shipped it took us a while to catch up because holy Moses, you guys were busy Christmas shopping, I guess. They took advantage of the 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 sale on Black Friday. <laughs> Take it easy on her. She's here alone doing this. <laughs> I'm at work mind. for most of the day and by the time I get home she's done. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a busy day, but it's a good thing. Take it I easy like on it. her. Slow down. <laughs> no uh, don't say that i'm not old <laughs> i'm 25 plus shipping, shipping and, and handling, handling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i thought for the day yesterday got them going pretty good oh yeah yeah what was it it says you should never wrap gifts and drink wine and if one of you gets my remote control for christmas i'm gonna need that back <laughs> <laughs> That sounds about right. <laughs> yep. Has anybody seen the cat? <laughs> <laughs> Mom's wrapping Christmas presents. Well, yeah, I've been I'm eating a... peanut butter balls for the last two days. Yes, thanks to Karen. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Love them. 
<laughs> one of my best friends, certainly one of my oldest friends. Um, every year she sends the boys their favorite Christmas goodies and their chocolate covered peanut butter balls. Some of the stuff with cherries and the haystacks and, the, you know, she sends them each box of goodies. So the two of them, one box is empty, Karen. That's dad. <laughs> I swear one that's box dead. is empty. The other one is well on its way. Yes. I can tell you. <laughs> I'm slowly making my way to the second layer. Yeah, I've been so. I've been pretty good. I haven't been indulging too much. <laughs> but oh yes, and I haven't even made anything yet. I've got. I have yet to see shortbread. Yeah, I'm making shortbread this week. So, but anywho. Yes. All of our babbling aside, I think these guys are probably ready to start painting. See if anybody's got something to say. Okay. 29 plus shipping and handling. Oh, there it is. There you go. My sign in the back. <laughs> no surprise there. There's Karen. <laughs> Somebody just commented they like my sign. <laughs> you don't have to be crazy to be an artist, but it helps. Okay. Uh, Love that. 29. I'll have to use it. Yes, the 29. I didn't know anything about the sale on Friday. There was a sale on Friday? On on Black Friday. It was actually the sale was... Uh... <laughs> Faye Reed. Oh, Tracy, I love shortbread just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Linnell said the same thing. <laughs> You're not getting my shortbread. <laughs> You're going to have to fight him for it. That's all I can say. <laughs> All right, guys, if you are ready to get started playing in some paint, so am I. It's rock and roll. I love this little guy. I think he's cute. So I was a good girl this morning. I Oh, how I, appropriate. We have the, uh, the dancing. The little gingerbread man. Yes. Yeah. So I thought that this would be fun. Uh... Deb and I were having our weekly confab. The two of us were chatting and painting together over the phone. We do that rather often. And um, we, when we're working on something, we sort of text things back and forth. And I texted her back a photo of this mug. And uh, we thought it was really cute. But I thought it needed something in the background. Now, I went with red. Um, kind of like it. I wanted it to have a really warm and cozy feel. And what's more warm and cozy than a, a favorite knit sweater? So I went with a, a knit pattern in the background, which I thought was fun. Gives it a nice texture back there without being really, really busy. And then, of course, it had to have glitter because it's Christmas. You got to have glitter at Christmas. And then I just, I really liked him. I just thought he was fun. And uh, I, I went with him. But when I got his face done, I realized he needed a nose. I don't like putting a mouth on a gingerbread. It's a thing with me. I don't know why. Um, but he did need a nose. So he got a cute little nose. And uh, of course, the peppermint sticks and you have to have holly leaves and of course, snowflakes. So this one, I think, has a lot of, uh, of really simple and yet very festive and fun little details. This is not a difficult paint. In fact, um, I think this would be a great one to do with the kids, especially because this could be done with markers. So um, I added to this pattern, I put in a, a second sheet with some ornaments in it, which I thought would be kind of cute. Again, these could be done with the kids. They could be done with um, watercolor paper, or you could do them with... Um, cardstock and they could just simply print the line drawing out cut them out and let them color them in any way they want to and add stamps or glitter or whatever they want I just think that this would be a fun little project for them to do obviously I painted these ones just on some little wooden tags but they could be done on watercolor or cardstock very easily and I think they're cute I mean who doesn't love gingerbread cookies I mean these guys are just cute so, and then, of course, you have to have that, you know, some fun little decorative elements back there, too. And then I did them in different colors simply because um, I, I just think it's more fun instead of just doing them in, in one color, having lots of variation. And then just to repeat what I've done on the larger tag, I, I used one of the little uh, tiny 
snowflakes, those little wooden snowflakes, laser cut ones from Southern Ridge and put them on the tag. I just think these are super cute. And then with the addition of a little bit of that snow text or dimensional paint with glitter, I just think that these work. And then I just went and got myself some um, Baker's twine. I have this in like 15 colors. Do you think I could find red? No. I had to get <laughs> Deb, God love her, w reeled off about you know, 10 miles of it and sent me some off of her big spool. So I now have some nice red and white Baker's twine. So I thought that these would be super cute. Again, really easy to paint. There's nothing rocket science about these little guys. But um, having those little extra pieces in the pattern, I think, just make things a little bit more fun. Now, uh, while I was doing this, of course, I had a whole bunch of other little ideas that I just sort of set off to the side. And hence the reason that there's another, there is a new free printable on the website this, this week. There's actually a couple of them, I think. Uh, I did one uh, that my members have had for a couple of weeks already, but then I uh, decided to post this new one on uh, as well. So you've got two new free printables on there. Uh, the coasters, I think, are really cute. I love the coaster design. I just think that's a fun one. I might actually paint those this week. I think they make a great little gift for a friend. And uh, again, I just stuck with very traditional, very simple, and then uh, thought I'd throw in a, a couple of fun little techniques while we were at it. So we're going to get started with the background on this. And it's super easy and it's a lot of fun because I love doing this stuff. And I think I might actually have like the Christmas ornament thing, Christmas decoration thing out of my system. Maybe. We'll see. I might have it out of my system. I don't know yet. I'll let you know. <laughs> so I'm going to tape my stencil in place with a little piece of painter's tape. And I'm going to be using, I need a nice big stencil brush. I'm using a Dynasty Stencil Pro. This one is a three quarter. And then the color that I'm using for that background is Scarlet. It's not an orange, but a red, a nice bright, bright red. Sort of a tone on tone. I like doing the tone on tone thing. It just works. So a little bit of paint on the brush. Swirl it in both directions so that you get a nice even load of color in that brush. Make sure you're, oh, it would help if I put it the right side down. Let's try this again. Good gravy, Marie. Now, I like to take my stencil off the edge just a little bit. It just makes things a bit more, oh, for pity's sake. Here we go. Okay. There. There. So I'm just going to do this whole knit pattern with that scarlet. Circular fashion, change directions frequently. Now this tone on tone, there's a reason why I went with this. I wanted this to brighten a little bit so that it had a visual texture, not just a pattern, but a visual texture. And so I went with a brighter red over top because I'm going to subdue this quite a bit. So it's going to look very, very bright. That's okay because it's going to change. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if it's not uniform or if it's imperfect. It really doesn't. And I like it taped in place for a couple of reasons. I don't want the stencil to move around too, too much. And I also want the ability to have a look at it and then decide if I'm happy with what I've got. So I can take my stencil and flip it back and have a look at my pattern. And I'm pretty satisfied with that. It's a little irregular at the edges, but that's all right. 
So then I'm just going to carefully move my stencil. So I just line up that first couple of rows with where I've already been. And I'm going to move my tape, put my tape up here. <laughs> hey, Patrick found a, uh, a shop in France where they sell Dynasty fountain brushes. Nice. And he bought the ones he didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> I like fountain brushes. I've been playing with them for texture. I did that little sheep, the little lamb. Yeah. I used the fountain brush to get that woolly texture on his oh, cool. fur. So I'm almost done here. Wait, there's a rack with a gin gingerbread man? In R.A.K.? Yeah, there is. With the gingerbread man? Yeah, the little star cookie. Oh, yeah. Last year we did the gingerbread man. Yeah. That pattern is still on the. I should move that over to the download side. We did the little gingerbread man. It popped up in my memories the other day that this is the 10th year I've been doing that. Doing the RA case. Really? 10, Ten years? years this year. Wow. Yeah. I did my first, first ones in 2013. Are you selling brushes? I am not. Um, however, if you go to the brushguys.com and use the coupon code Tracy M, you will get a nice little discount off of their already discounted prices. And what is the stencil again? This one is M277, which is that knit, knit pearl it's called. So I'm going to dry that because I got a little heavy handed with the paint on one side here. You can see where it's just sort of bled a little, but by the time I'm done, you'll never see it. Hi from Maryland. Oh, how convenient. Hi. We're from New Maryland. Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That must mean you're from old Maryland. If we are new Maryland. figure that out by yourself did you <laughs> super smart super smart <laughs> smrt i'm painting bees butterflies and hummingbirds on a trunk for a customer Ooh, nice nice to get a break ah, i lost it nice to get a break yeah. I love working with these stencils because they just, they line up so easily. And so I get to finish off that edge really nicely. This is just a fun stencil. It looks great on all sorts of things. Uh, yeah. There is a two level stench stencil brush that has Tracy's name on it, but you're not using it. No, that's a texture. Stencil oh, it's brush. my texture stencil brush. Yeah. yeah. That one was designed for working on textured surfaces primarily. Um, it does work on smooth surfaces. I love that, that it's versatile, but it's primarily for textured surfaces, hence that double layer of bristle. It's a fabulous, fabulous stencil brush. The stencil, uh, stencil brush, stencil pro. This is the Dynasty stencil pro, oh, okay. the synthetic. And you, in the Tracy Moreau signature Stencil brush is yeah. the textured. Yes, and it's yeah. a natural hair. Yeah. yeah. So I've got. I like this tone on tone look. The scarlet over top of that country red. That's what I've got on the background. If I notice that everyone is, seems to be having trouble finding country red these days, uh, stores like Michaels don't carry it because it doesn't fall into the top one hundred and four colors. Um. So if you're struggling find, to find it, try using um, tomato red. It's very close. And honestly, the difference is negligible when you're doing something like this anyway. So, 
so there we go nice and dry so now i have to we need to deepen this color palette a little bit and we're going to do that with a little bit of soft black and where did i put my soft black I have my little rack of paint sitting in front of me. There it is. So soft black. I like this one. It's a red based black. It's almost as if there's a touch of purple in it or a touch of dark red. I love that color. And I'm going to make myself a high tech applicator. <laughs> and I take a shop towel, tear it in half, then I'm going to tear it into quarters. And bundle one up like this and tuck it inside the other one to get a little pillow. Just like that. High tech applicator. It took researchers at NASA to figure this one out. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so now I, I've just got it wet with a little bit of water. Um, you can do this with glaze or you can do it with water. Either one will work. I have a little pot of glaze. Good? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is Joe Sonia's. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of that glaze. I want this wet, but I don't want it dripping. So I'm going to pick up a gob of soft black. <laughs> Technical terms. This, I know this scares the pants off of people when I do this, but so I'm just going to go around the outside edge of my board with a little bit of soft black. Now, you will notice that when I do this, I change directions, just like I do when I'm stenciling. What? Not asphaltum? Not asphaltum today. We will be using asphaltum, just uh, not for yeah. this. <laughs> so essentially, I want a dark value at the outside edge. And then I want the inner portion of this to remain quite light. So I'm not too worried about the outside edge. It can get it can get quite dark. That's okay. But I want to maintain a lighter value towards the center of this panel. Now, this is a light touch. I am not scrubbing the kitchen floor. I'm washing the baby's face. That's how I describe this, washing the baby's face. So you're putting color on gently, working it in a circular fashion. And I messed up and I got a little too much moisture in one spot there and took off the color. There we go. Okay, so I've got a nice lighter value in the center. And yeah, it looks a little messy. That's okay. Nice lighter value in the middle. So this is going to give us that sort of glow that we get in the background. So if you look at this, see how we've got a lighter value, that little bit of a glow in here? That's where that comes from. It's because I've left this section untouched. So from here, you're going to trace and transfer your line drawing on. And then we're going to start working on, isn't that a fun? I think I'm going to have to do another mug with a Santa Claus or a snowman. I need to do a snowman. Okay. Okay. I didn't, I guess I don't have Christmas at my, out of my system yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on that. <laughs> uh, Sandy is uh, making it a quote. What's Washing that? the baby's face, not scrubbing the kitchen. Floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is now a quote. It's now a quote. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, so my uh, good friend, Steve, mm -hmm. um, added on to my favorite quote. Yeah. Be a good human. Yeah. Yeah. He added on it. Oh, did he? Yeah. What was it? And I actually really like it. Okay. Yeah. Be a good human. Uh -huh. Don't be a dumpster fire. Don't be a dumpster fire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> little extreme, but I like it. Yeah, it, it works. Don't uh -huh. be a good human. Don't be a dumpster, dumpster fire. fire. Yeah, there's enough of those out there. Yep. I I, <laughs> I need stickers. I took I took <laughs> about an, an hour today and cleaned all my brushes because they were tragic. Wow. Yeah. 
tragic. Miss Veronica, if you're watching, help. <laughs> <laughs> Send more. <laughs> Send help. <laughs> uh, what color paint did you use for the gingerbread? This one, well, actually, you can use either of the following. You can use raw sienna or honey brown. And the reason I say that is because I did this guy with raw sienna. And then when I prepped everything for today, I used honey brown. I whoopsied. So in this one, I used raw sienna. I got a lot of donkeys. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start adding some shadows to lift all of this stuff forward. So I'm using a 3 8 angled shader. I, I love my faux squirrel. So we're using the faux squirrel. And I'm using a little bit of that soft black. And I'm going to blend it out well on the palette. <laughs> yeah, this one says one in a melon. Mm -hmm. And we're going to float inside darkest value towards the letter. Like so. Leggings are not pants. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he has a collection of stickers and he's reading them. <laughs> Leggings are not pants. <laughs> I beg to differ. Got a lot of sticker mule stuff here. Yeah, well, I like sticker mule. Oh. <laughs> Gortzman's Art Supplies? Yes. One of my favorite art supply stores. That's in Toronto, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's, and it's in Kens it's in Kensington. Kensington? And like the Oh, you're too young to remember that anyway. Okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there's two of them. When I was a kid, there was a television show called The King of Kensington. And Kensington is an area in Toronto. Fabulous area. Sort of the melting pots like Brooklyn is in New York. It's just yeah, it's a great spot. So you know, there's <laughs> Chinatown is down there. <laughs> you know, there's all sorts of stuff. And it's just this wonderful mod podge of, of cultural influences. And in the middle of it all is Gwartzman's Art Supply. I just love their store. And I've been, I have in the last couple of years been ordering online. I used to make a trip down to Toronto a couple of times a year and visit with a friend, a really good friend there. And uh, her and I would make a point of going to visit Miss Jackie at Gwartzman's, another friend. And, uh, of course, then, you know, shop till our heart's content while we were there. Great store. Uh, they do have an awesome online service. I've been ordering from them for the last few years. So, Gwartzman's. Great art supply. Been around a long, long time. Have the coolest store in the heart of Toronto. It's fabulous. So I'm just putting a little float of that soft black just to lift that lettering off the surface a little bit. And don't forget, you've got to get underneath that letter too. Those little connecting points. Those cast shadows too, so those have to be done. Just makes it more interesting. Doesn't look quite so flat. So almost finished, I'm just going to inside this big C. I love doing this part first because when I paint my lettering, if I've had any little bobbles or wobbles or spots that are not perfect, um, the color that I put over top of the lettering alleviates that. I'm going to have to zoom in here. Yeah. Oops. Aww. Try and keep the palette in view, too. There you go. <laughs> I 
There we go. So that little bit of shading makes those letters pop. Now once we put the color on that lettering, they're going to pop forward even more. And then I'm going to take that same color, I'm going to go with a slightly larger brush. I'm going to go with my half inch angle and I'm going to thin out my soft black a little bit. And I need to put a shadow directly up against the inside edge of my mug, right up against it. Doesn't need to be too strong, it doesn't need to be very wide. But just a little bit of a shadow in there. And up against my handle. And all this does is it just, again, brings this little guy forward a little bit. So I got three new patterns up this week. I was really glad to get those done. Holy. Three? Three. Wow. This one. You had time to design? Uh, yeah, I did. I made oh. time to design. Oh, um, I finished the pattern for the little sheep. Finally. It's only been sitting there for, you know, <laughs> a month. Just I haven't had time oh, the to do it. the cattle ones? Yeah, the cattle tag, the little sheep. Oh. I finished that one. That one is up. And then I designed and painted uh, three new ornaments called uh, ornam Ornamental Cardinals. And so that pattern went up on this week. And I had a commission to finish, so I finished the commission. <laughs> so it's been a busy week. And then, like, orders from uh, the sale. And then I had to get all my back orders out, too. So it's been a busy week. And so I sat down yesterday and um, worked on this new piece that... Well, it's not a new piece. Worked on this old design. Wanted to clean it up. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing next Saturday. So I started painting that this morning. And I finished the piece for pixelated palette. So I was excited about that. So, you got one with cardinals? Yeah. Nice. I don't have the originals because they were a commission. Oh. But they... Uh, it did turn out quite nice. Remember the little chickadees? That one there? No. No? The, oh, I don't. I think it's on the tree upstairs. Little uh. Christmas ornament, the sleds with the chickadees on it. Oh, okay. Um, I did a set with cardinals, male oh, and cool. female. Yeah. They turned out very nice. I was very pleased. So once they, they were all done and sent off, I wanted to get the pattern done so I did <laughs> <laughs> so almost there I just wanted to finish off this I like this float cleans up a multitude of sins there we go so now remember I was talking about leaving that center area lighter and this is why so that when we do all of the shading it gives us that nice little bit of light back there. So it brings everything forward. Super easy. So this one is predominantly a lot of shading. There's not a ton of highlighting, but there is a lot of shading. And fortunately for me, it's a brown, which means I can use my Ashfaltum to my heart's content. <laughs> I love Ashfaltum. <laughs> this feels like a shopping channel. Shop and watch, shop and watch. <laughs> So this one is just fun. Now, one of the, the fun things that I added to this that I really like, I, I am obsessed with these these little snowflakes. Is Edward here? I don't know. Is that, Edward. The, is that the word for the day? Obsessed? Obsessed? No, not today. Not today? No, I don't know what it is today. Poor Edward. Poor Edward. <laughs> Edward's been busy. He's been painting Christmas gifts and, oh, has he? and posting photos and they're amazing. 
Edward is very talented. I am looking for... I had a little bag of snowflakes and I don't know what I did with it. I think they're all the way over there. On my in the corner there. I see the oh, little Ziploc bag of snowflakes. That's the ones. I have a whole bunch of these Looks coming. Like a... Never mind. So, a dime bag of snowflakes. A dime, I have a dime bag of snowflakes, yeah. So these are the fabulous little snowflakes. These are all laser cut um, from MDF. I just love these. I think they're phenomenal. And they make such great decorations. I love how they just add a little extra dimension to things, you know, with those little tiny snowflakes. Where'd you get them? The, I got these from Southern Ridge Trading. <laughs> You're killing me. Ah! <laughs> and then, of course, I love the other ones, the chipboard. These are also from Southern Ridge Trading. I love these. When Karen showed me these, when she first came up with them, I thought, oh my gosh. I could see myself putting them in everything. And I have. Because <laughs> they're amazing. I love the detail. Um, the one trick that I just thought was brilliant was using a paint roller, leaving the snowflakes in the grid and then using a paint roller to put the color on. And then while it was wet, sprinkle them with glitter. And I just, I love how these turned out. They're just so pretty. So I used these, I used a couple of different sizes. I'm running out. I have to place another order um, because I just love these. So I used a couple of different sizes and I used some of these little laser cut ones. They're phenomenal. And so this is the result. So when you're doing, you do those layers of snowflakes in with stencil and then you, you counter it with a little bit of this elevation with various sizes. And I just think it works really, really well. So that is what I did <laughs> with these. These are great toys. I love these things. I and Franco's got a question. Yes. Um, did some gingerbread men, but with bites missing out of them. <laughs> Would you put a sad face on their face? A sad frown on the face? No. No. Should never have a sad gingerbread. He paint his eyes white, make he him into a zombie, but... <laughs> <laughs> But no, I would, I, I think that's one of the reasons I don't put a mouth on my gingerbread. It gives them too much emotion? I, I just, I think that they just look more animated without a mouth. Okay. I just, I like them and they're easy and fun. You can dress them up a bit if you want them to look happier. You can give them eyelashes or, you know, change the shape of his eyes. But I, um, And you could say that he's a war veteran. That he, he lost his leg in Nam. Yes, I heard the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's just a bite, he, he got wounded in Nam. So I, I'm playing with this. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> um, Southern, Karen at Southern Ridge, she's so good to me. I sent, um, I had placed an order for some new pieces that should be along here shortly. I should have them this week. Um and the last shipment that I got, she sent me this. And I'm so excited to play with it. So this one is actually three pieces. So there's a frame and then there's this piece in the center. And then there's the back piece. So I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with it yet. But I'm going to do something with it. Because I just, I really like it. And then I have like a couple of million of these coming too. I think I ordered a hundred of them. The little tiny stars. So... <laughs> They're just so cute, but but they're they're fun appliques to stick onto things, and I'm just mo moderately obsessed with these little snowflakes. I keep thinking of places I can stick them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go to sleep. Yeah, no. <laughs> I am now a target. <laughs> well, I've been relatively restrained with my Christmas decorating this year. What? <laughs> Yeah, well. Um, this is restraint? That's restraint, yes. Wow. I'd hate to see you go full bore then. <laughs> you have seen me go full bore. <laughs> this is restrained. There's only one tree up in the house. 
<laughs> Shut up. <laughs> in the house. <laughs> Only one. <laughs> Shush, you. We haven't even put out the laser pointer thingy yet. No, no that no, broke. That broke. Right. So I've got a little bit of country red. And we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to do the holly berries. And we're going to do the candy cane. And I wanted to tell you about a, a color alternative that I think you might find fun. Um, if you're not into the dark red or you can't find it, try this. Watermelon Slice. This color makes awesome candy canes. I know it looks pink. It's very pink. It, it, but it's not when you do it as a candy cane. It's awesome. This. So if you don't have the... Um, country red or something like that or the tomato red you want to try something really neat for candy canes watermelon slice makes great candy canes i love this color on a candy cane so just keep that in mind so i'm going to grab i've got a beat up old rigger here and i've got some country red and we're going to add some stripes to our candy cane and i should my pencil first. There it is. Okay. That's not the one. I cannot find things I'm looking for today. There it is. Okay. I got it. I was looking for my Tombow pencil. So <laughs> Product placement. <laughs> <it's> just, <laughs> these ones don't smear and the other ones do. Ah. So... I'm going to put a stripe on my candy cane on my handle like so. I'm just free handing this one in. Right now, that mm -hmm. gingerbread man yeah. looks like he's screaming in pain. Who? The one you're doing right now. <laughs> okay. He's got a straw stuck in his head. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's terrified. Mm hmm just mouth slightly open, just like, what's going to happen? There we go. Okay, so I've got red stripes. So I'm using just a little bit of country red. Now, I love the white underneath country red. Because it does two things. You notice how this does not look like our background color? The background color is country red, but it's just two coats of red over the base surface. When you put country red over top of the white, it just gets brighter and richer. And I love that. So it changes how that color looks because it's responding to the color that's underneath it. And we're going to do the same thing to those berries. And I love how bright this color is when it's over top of white. It's just yummy. And the nice part is you only need one coat. I love the red over. I gotta refresh the chat. I I think I'm way behind. <laughs> Are ya? Oh boy, did I ever hoop that stripe? Let me see here if I fix this. There we go. That's better. There we go. Not getting anything from YouTube. There oh, we go. They could be busy painting along. They could be. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> and now I'm going to do the same thing to this little guy here. There we go. <laughs> I made it. A little late, but I made it. <laughs> Now, 
Now, my taste for Christmas this year has been very, very traditional. I tend to be quite traditional when it comes to holiday designs. And I've been playing with my color of the day um, a bit this week and using some really unique color combinations for Christmas decorating as the, as the theme. Yesterday's was brown. Not exactly a color that you would use at Christmas or think of when you think of Christmas, but um, I just have been coming across some really great imagery and uh, I just thought it would be a fun way to play with the color of the day. I think you got to put a thin line of green amongst that candy cane. Why? Because <laughs> traditionally, candy cane has a red, white, and green that's, stripe. Yeah, that's true. Some do, anyway. The best ones do. <laughs> <laughs> that's the peppermint. <laughs> it's the spearmint. Spearmint, sorry. Spearmint. That's the expensive, <laughs> really expensive extract. Yep. Have you seen the price of spearmint no, extract? No, I haven't. Have you seen the price of a bottle of real vanilla extract? Yeah. Yikes. That's why I made some. So about... We're chatting away on YouTube. Not sure why it's not coming across you. I have no idea either. I don't see anybody here either. JL Brewer's husband wants a laser etcher, CNC cutter, and 3D printer. Ooh. Wow. CNC printers are not, or CNC cutters are not cheap. Nope. The laser etcher. <sighs> There's a couple of them on the market right now that are surprisingly affordable. Yeah. But it also depends on what you're going to be doing with it. If yeah. you're going to be doing it for hobby applications, yeah. uh, that's one thing. But if you're going to be doing it for business application, that's entirely different. I think a pr 3D printer just to play with it would be cool. Yeah, I think so too. When I was in Germany before the world shut down, um, I had the opportunity to spend a little bit of time with the people at Lexmark. And they were demonstrating their new laser printers. Oh, yeah. And super cool. And uh, I was there with Stan Clifford, and <laughs> we were trying to figure out, I wonder if you can paint these things. <laughs> but acrylic paint doesn't really stick to that type of plastic very well. So oh, Jessica, get her in with twenty dollars. Oh, Word thank you. Numbers. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All she says is, "We are here." Excellent. So I'm going to base coat these little berries with. A little bit of warm white, just one coat. Doesn't need to be perfect. I gotta fix a couple of things here though. There we go. Do you make vanilla extract with vodka or spiced rum? Vanilla. I uh, I make it with uh vodka. What? Huh? Yeah. Make vanilla extract. How do you think they extract it? They use alcohol. Okay. I have a bottle of it up in the cupboard. Hmm. I was looking, I was in, just happened to see what the price of a bottle of vanilla extract, pure vanilla extract was. And I was shocked because I, I think the last time I bought a bottle of, of vanilla extract, it was, you know, a little bottle was nine or ten dollars and it was like twenty four dollars for a bottle of pure vanilla extract hmm. so it's expensive and it's not getting any cheaper so um i had a couple of tubes of vanilla beans so i thought oh wouldn't it be fun to make my own so i did hmm. <laughs> And I also made my own vanilla sugar <laughs> while I was at it. So I have a container full of sugar that has been 
sitting with for about six months with uh, two sticks of vanilla bean in it to flavor the sugar you just stir it up every once in a while so my berries are base coated with white and I'm going to put a coat of that country red on those two gingers are my daughter's favorites really little gingers <laughs> i like ginger snaps i've had people call me a ginger gee i can't imagine why i'm bald <laughs> your beard isn't <laughs> fair enough <laughs> you know you come by it honestly Do I? Yeah, you do. Yeah. I don't have a soul. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the problem is. Okay. Well, apparently gingers don't have souls. Uh, that's what they say. That's what they say. Yeah. Who's they? I don't know. Yep. The ubiquitous they. <laughs> So. It's our word. <laughs> <laughs> Costco is usually pretty good price for vanilla. But is yeah. it real vanilla? They do, actually. Or vanilla bean in tubes. Yeah, yeah, that's where I get my beans. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, but you know what? I, I'll pay $15, $20 for a couple of tubes of vanilla bean. But I can do, you know, 10 pounds of vanilla sugar. And a, I've got about a liter of vanilla extract upstairs. <laughs> Not true, Renee. <laughs> <laughs> he has a soul. It's just a dark one. <laughs> <laughs> it's twisted. Yeah. My guardian angel face palms. <laughs> His guardian angel drinks heavily. <laughs> <laughs> So we have holly berries. You don't want to be around when a ginger snaps. <laughs> oh. Renee knows that. <laughs> so we are ready to go. So the first thing that we're going to tackle, everything is base coated. First thing we're going to tackle is all of the shading on this cookie. Now I used Ashfaltum. And, and this little tidbit of information is going to come back and bite me because I base coated this little guy with honey brown when it should have been raw sienna. And uh, the lettering up top is done with honey brown. So I'm going to have to reverse things a little bit, but that's okay. So I've got a half inch angle and some asphaltum. A little bit of glaze. You don't want this color full strength. You want to thin it out a little bit so that you have some control over how dark it gets. The nice part at this point is you don't really have to worry about um, these floats being overly tidy. I mean, you're going to try to get them as neat as you can, but you don't have to be too, too uptight about it simply because a lot of this is going to get painted over, like those white areas and whatnot. So under the chin, around the hands. Now this first series is going to be a little rough looking and that's okay. Is this the same surface as last week? No. no last uh, week we were on the arched panels, which I'm sold out of right now, so... This is on the 6x10? This is on the 6x10 tag. Yeah. Yep. I love this surface. I like the simpler surfaces. Are you getting more stars? Yes. I am getting more stars. I'm waiting on an order. Star Everyone knows Renee is an angel. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Just keep in mind stuff with Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Just His saying. name is Lucifer or... Morningstar, all right? <laughs> Lucifer Morningstar. <laughs> <sighs> uh, oh, yes, the angel. 
<laughs> Fallen. I am the black sheep. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's not a bad thing in this house. No. <laughs> There's, what was it? You, you need thick skin, a dark sense of humor. What was the other one? No, you need a sense of humor. Uh, a sense of humor. Yeah, not um, necessarily a dark one, but definitely need to have one. Oh, a dark one helps too. Yeah, well, a dark one doesn't hurt, but. <laughs> <laughs> and thick skin. And thick skin. Okay. You need thick skin. You got to be able to take it and dish it out. Yep. Because the Lord knows. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't take it. <laughs> I, I Th- that's a good rule to have. If you can't take it, don't dish it out. Yeah. If you can dish it out, you better be ready to take it. <laughs> and an appetite. Yes. Yes. That's an absolute must yeah. in this house. So dinner tonight is uh, meatloaf. <laughs> is it good meatloaf? My meatloaf is. Your meatloaf. Did you do it with oatmeal? No. No? You did it with breadcrumbs? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the one with the oatmeal is a little too heavy. Well, I don't make it with oatmeal. No? No. Some people do. I don't. I tried it with oatmeal. It was, eh, eh. No. It's too filling. Yeah. I I have for years, I've made mine with, with breadcrumbs. Uh, breadcrumbs. I got a recipe off of, this is going to sound really funny. I took a recipe from um, stovetop stuffing about 35 years ago. And I have used a, a variation on that ever since. So one package of stovetop stuffing, one package of Lipton's onion soup mix. That's why your stuffing is delicious. Two eggs. That's why. And then top it off with chili sauce and a little bit of ketchup. That's it. Put it in the oven. It's super easy, super tasty. So I am shaded up against the icing on that side, and I'm going to do it on this side. And as I said, don't worry about this being overly neat and tidy, because at this point it doesn't matter. We're just establishing some shadows. So it's going to look a little rocky for a bit. That's okay. And he's a cookie. He's not going to be perfectly smooth anyway. He didn't finish what he said, though. What? What I said? What? What did you say? Did I miss something, Linda? <laughs> did I miss something? You called me an angel. That's where you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the compliment. <laughs> where was it? But I can tell you he couldn't do it with a straight face, so. <laughs> no. Everyone knows Renee is an angel. Look what he does for his mom. I try to do a little... He's a good kid. He's a good boy. Hey, I'm not in jail. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, he's a good human. I've never been brought home by the cops. Even uh, though... No? Yes. No, I have not been ho brought home by the cops. No, that's quite true. <laughs> you got home before they did. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Let <laughs> me <laughs> stand corrected. Haven't been arrested. No. I've been stopped at gunpoint a few times, but... Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, both of us have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Together. Because, <laughs> you know, gangbanger right here. Yeah. yeah. So, I've got that first shading in, and yeah, it's going to look a little rocky, and that's okay. He's a cookie. <laughs> Honestly. So I've just established and separated a bunch of things. That's all what all that this first shading does. So I've got a little bit of soft black in my brush. I'm just going to deepen a couple of shadows. And these two in particular, this little corner 
in here by the arm. I'm just putting in a little bit of soft black, not a lot. I just want to deepen that. <laughs> now what? JL Brewer, I can't believe my bad habits. All my money goes into craft supplies and dog toys. <laughs> You say that like it's a bad thing. I'm going to save you some money right now, Jail. Um, Get a bark box. $30 a month. I'll send you $30 worth of toys and treats. Yep. I I got it, and I definitely got more than $30 worth of toys and treats. There's way more stuff in that box than there should have been. (laughs) But do it. it. Dot loves them. Yeah. Dot's happy to get whatever she gets. Any anything new? Yeah. If it's new, she wants to smell it. Yeah. And well, if, I know she, she has knows. to inspect everything that comes into this house. You know, it's what she does. I know. It's the nose. Yep. Oh, the something nose. new. Yep. Smell it. It's not a drug, and it's not explosive. It's okay. Yeah. It can stay. It can stay. Yeah. So I, pardon me, got the hiccups. <laughs> So I'm going to put a little float of asphaltum on the right side of the nose, just a little C-shaped float, right side of the nose on the face, just like that. So essentially these little eyeballs are casting shadows. So I've got shadows on the right side, darkest value towards the eye and the nose. And so that gives you a nice little cast shadow on the eyeballs. And I'm going to dry all of this. A couple of spots there that didn't want to dry. There we go. And now we're going to go back in with that larger angled shader and a nice big float. And this is where we get to clean up and crisp up a whole bunch of things. So all of those shadows are going to suddenly get a little bit more cohesive. And a little sharper. Like so. And I like that they're kind of messy. I like them when they're a little bit messy because they just give him a little bit more texture. come this close to signing up for bark box but haven't yet you should i was pleasantly surprised with what i got there was definitely more treats and yeah and toys i was impressed with the quality of them yeah the quality of the toys yep um unless your dog's a big chewer then don't go with the bark box go with the super chewer yeah it's the pretty much the same thing except it's more it's made for dogs that chew yeah Dot just likes to kill things. Yeah, she likes to take <laughs> apart stuffed toys. <laughs> she takes them apart. The ones she likes are the ones that have little holes in them. Yeah. The ones that she... Eh. Like Lamb Chop. Lamb Chop finally bit the big one, but yeah. Lamb Chop was her favorite for quite some time. Yeah. But the unicorn is the ultimate one. Yeah. She she There's only a little hole in the nose and that's it. Yeah. Yep. But... It's like... Uh, is she. It's funny because she almost tests them (laughs) to see if they fall apart and if they don't well then this one's my favorite you can stay so i'm just going back in i'm deepening a few little shadows particularly under that icing because i want that to look like it's coming down over top if you go over these white lines it's okay don't worry too much about them Now, on this side of our little gingerbread, we need a float of that asphaltum. Now, I've thinned this quite a bit because it's going to be a fairly big float, and I want a little more control over it. There we go. Uh, What was that? Are the toys hard to tear up? My boxer is awful with toys. They're, they're relatively easy to tear up. 
but that's for safety reasons. Yeah. Um, but they do have some toys that are pretty tough. Yeah. Uh, for a boxer, though, I would go with the Super Chew. Yeah. Yeah, go with, like, the the Super Chew box or whatever it's called. Yeah. It's all so- from the same company. Yeah. I was Yeah, I was very impressed with the quality of the toys. So there, I've got my shading in place. I'm happy with that. I like that he has a little bit of texture to him because he's. we are going to put a fair amount of texture on this little guy. So uh, because I used the, um, the wrong color for the base coat on this guy, I just got a little too excited. I'm going to use a little bit of almondine for my highlight. Usually I would use this color for the highlight on the raw sienna but i whoopsied base coated him the wrong color so i'm going to just put a little float of almondine on this side he just needs a little highlight i have heavily thinned this color for a reason it's a little it's very light and i like the control didn't we do the super chewer for dot? The f- yeah, we gave it to her for Christmas a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. You su- that was the one- oh, we still have her turkey. Yeah. So there are items like you would find Kongs. Yeah. Um, all natural rubber toys. Yeah. Stuff like that. Ooh, too late. Uh, it's called Super Chewer by Bark. Yep, by Bark Box. Yeah. Um. They also have a dental box. Yep. So if you're looking to try dental products for your dog. Yep. So I've got a highlight on the arm, the hand, the hand here, and on this side of the arm. So our light source is coming from this side. And I also want one low in the front right here. Just in the middle. Right underneath those hearts. Just a little one right there. And then I'm going to grab my point blender. I love my point blender. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of country red. And I'm going to swirl this pretty good on the palette. I want this brush almost dry. I'm going to blot it a little bit. And I like the cheeks, those rosy cheeks. Underneath the eye and just offset a little bit so a nice little rosy cheek on both sides I think it just makes him look so cute would a boxer be classified as a medium sized dog medium to large yeah yeah go medium 20 to 50 pounds yeah 20 to 50 pounds that would be a boxer Really? I would have thought a boxer would tip out like dot size or a little bigger. No, they're, little they're, they're just, they're very lean. Yeah. So there, I've got a nice little rosy cheek. I like rosy cheeks. And then I have another point blender here somewhere and I'm going to, I have my little one. I'm going to pick up a little of that almondine on this little one because I want to put soft highlight in here in and around that heart just a little on his tummy it's hard to put a float in there so I'll just do that with a little dry brush in there so we've got a fair amount of detail done already I think he's kind of cute so now we're going to start working on all of those little little details that pull this together. So our color, Prussian blue. We're going to do some candy. So a little bit of Prussian blue. I'm going to switch. I want a nice big angled shader for this. So I'm going to go with my half inch. And a little bit of Joe Sonia's on my brush. And I'm only going to pick up a small amount 
of that Prussian blue because it's a strong color. And I'm going to blend it well on my palette so that I get a nice transition. And now the shading when it comes to this candy here goes in two places. We need one here because it's out of the way. It's out of the direct line of the light. So we need one right here. And it needs to stop just at that curve right there. So bring it to the, you know, to the top of that stripe. And I'm going to let that one set. And then the other one goes from the bottom down here on that white all the way up to just before the top. So where that light would run out. So I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to deepen it. I want to get rid of that little schmegly that's in there. There we go. <laughs> yes, Grace, we can see your comment just it takes a while for it to sh pop up on my screen and i don't think we can call dibs on saturdays no you nope. can't call dibs on you saturdays can't call dibs on saturdays <laughs> <laughs> my members can do that on their tuesday night class are you hosting on this year tuesday night class their last ch last class of 2000. It'll be the 27th of December. It is. Ooh. It's going to be Day fun. after Boxing Day. Yep. So we've got that nice little shadow in on our handle. And I'm going to do the same thing to this candy cane. Now, I need to come in under that holly and around it and then straight up the back of that. And it stops short on that curve. So we don't want that cap. We want that cap nice bright red or white, sorry. So our shadows look great. And I want to deepen this a little bit because I'm really liking that shadow. So <laughs> there we go. Andrea George, the joys of being retired. I forgot today is Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I live by my calendar. I don't forget what day it is. <laughs> yep. So Ooh, I need that sweater stencil. Sweater stencil? The knit stencil? Yeah, I love that one. We have a holiday coupon code. It's holidays. All caps, all one word. Holidays. in your face <laughs> glitter depends could be a new invention yeah they that, could that, be especially at missed... christmas time i'm so glad that you were working thursday because <laughs> i was down here glitterifying a whole bunch of things and i literally had glitter everywhere oh god but i was a good girl i cleaned it all up <laughs> the gingerbread dude is exercising again. He's yep. trying to do a sit-up. <laughs> oh, no, we got the dancing gl oh. gingerbread man. Oh, is he doing calisthenics? Yes. Oh. He's doing jumping jacks, but he's actually throwing hearts. Ah, how cute. So I've got my shading on my candy cane. So now we have to deal with a whipped cream. So I'm changing over to a little bit of Bahama blue. Crystal blue will work for this too. If you don't have Bahama blue, you can use crystal blue. And again, I'm not using the color full strength. I'm blending it out quite a bit. And we're going to float underneath the folds and in behind our berries and our holly leaves. I love Bahama blue for this. It's just a great shading color for the whipped cream. And it's very forgiving because you can tuck it in and it works really, really well. It's nicely opaque, so it covers nicely. So look at that. Now, 
I'm doing this first shading to separate all of this whipped cream and get around the holly leaves. And then to do the shading on the back side of this, I'm going to come in from the edge just a little, just a scooch, only need like a millimeter or so, just a little space. It just gives this nice shape. Just really like how it shapes this. So it accentuates those curves. And I love Bahama Blue, love Bahama Blue. I think it's my favorite all-time blue in the Decorart lineup. I love it. Use it a lot. So there. Doesn't that look yummy? I just love how Bahama Blue looks. So, and then I'm going to do the same thing along the bottom here and up the side. I want to have that little space. It just helps give this nice little shape. I love something about whipped cream and gingerbread. So we've got our gingerbread, our whipped cream done. We've got our candy cane handles are shaded. So now we have to shade his nose, these little hearts, and those berries. And we're going to do that with that. I'm going to work with a 3 8 angle and a little bit of that Prussian blue, just a tiny bit. We don't want this too, too dark because it's a pretty strong color. So I'm going to start with the nose and I'm going to put just a C-shaped float of that Prussian blue on the right side of that nose. So we've got a nice little float on the nose. And I'm going to put a shadow on these berries. And again, I'm doing the same thing that I did with that whipped cream. I'm leaving a little sliver of space. Just a little one. It does make a world of difference. So each one of those berries gets that little sliver of space so that we have some of that original base color showing through. So just a little C-shaped float, like so. And we're going to do the same thing to these berries down here. That little bit, that sliver of color, just helps accentuate that curve, that spherical appearance. And it just shows you that there's a little bit of light on the other side. So we've got our shading in. This little guy is cute. Cute, cute, cute. And the hearts are going to get the same treatment. So a little bit of that Prussian blue. Again, I'm coming in from the edge just slightly. Like so and come down to the point on the right hand side. So that little shape, and then don't forget, we gotta do the same thing on that other arch. So at about the top and come down like so. It just helps give these little hearts a little more dimension. So we've done the nose, got the hearts done, got those berries done. Put that shading in. Make sure it's good and dry. If your shading is not as dark as you would like, uh, let it dry well and then come back to it. You can always do another float. And you don't really have to worry about it being too, too dark unless it looks black. If it looks black, then, you know, your color's a little too strong. But this little guy is stinking cute. And we're gonna have a little bit of fun with the, uh, with some snow tacks. Cause I got, oops, I got a little bit of snow tacks. We got a snow writer. This is dimensional paint. Hopefully my, oh, look, it's gonna work. What do you know? 
Um, so we've got a little bit of snow tax. The other thing that I have is this. Uh, what I did was I took a little bit of warm white and I put it into one of these little um, outliners. These are inexpensive. You can order them by the, you can actually get them at the local Michael's store. There's usually three or four in a pack. And these work just flipping great. Fill it up with your favorite acrylic paint that you want to use as a liner. And then uh, Bob's your uncle, Sally's your aunt. So we have a couple of different options for doing that icing. Uh, I love the snow tax. I'm just not a huge fan of this squeeze bottle. <laughs> it's hard on my hands. Um, so I'm going to be using this one today, but you can use this as well. I'm just going to show you a fun way to use just some acrylic paint to do this. So now that we've got that shading in, uh, the one thing we have left to shade is those leaves. So we're going to do that with a little bit of I'm using a little bit of my bottle of plantation pine is empty so I'm using a little bit of sap green um, but ordinarily I use plantation pine put paint back in its rack so I'm not knocking stuff over so a little bit of plantation pine I'm using a, a small angled shader I've got a this is a 3 8 I'm blending this out well so it's not full strength because otherwise it's a bit dark. Nope, well, not quite enough. There we go. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a float at the base of the leaf. And this does a couple of things. One, it helps enhance that curve in the leaf by putting that darker value right at the base, like so. So it's sort of a U-shaped float. And I love how it just helps define these leaves really nicely. There we go. So there's that first float. Just gets the nice and dark at the base. I'm going to do the same thing to these fellas down here. I'm waiting on zombie gingerbread. Where is Bob? He's here somewhere. I have him. There he is. Zombie Bob. <laughs> they can't see Bob. They can't see Bob. There's Bob. Okay. That's, that's his belly button. <laughs> that's just his body. <laughs> there hey, Bob. there's bob good grief i haven't zoomed in right oh okay <laughs> <laughs> that would explain it so i've got a little bit of shading at the base of each of those leaves i like the shading just at the bottom it again accentuates that curve i'm gonna dry this real quick and then we'll put a little float down the center vein. I'll get Bob out of the way for a second. We're going to put a float of that same plantation pine down the center vein of each of these leaves, right to the point. Is that plantation pine? Uh, this one is sap green because my plantation pine bottle is empty. And our local Michaels didn't have any, so. So I have therefore ordered some. <laughs> <laughs> couple quick phone calls. Oh, not even just a quick email. <laughs> <laughs> so Ooh. there's a nice Ooh. little float. So by putting that initial shading at the base and then doing my center vein, I get a nice curve, a nice shape to my leaf. So I've got nice, nice holly leaves. I like the rosy cheeks. The rosy cheeks actually stand out quite nice against that honey brown. So now we're ready to start doing some highlighting. I've done a little bit on this mug, just on his arms and hands. 
Um, because he doesn't really need a ton of highlighting, he is a mug. So we are going to put a little bit in. But let's start with the nose and those little hearts. And I'm going to use a little bit of warm white. Tiny, tiny amount. Blend it out well because you don't want this color full strength. And we're going to put a float of that white down the left side of our little hearts. And the float starts where that first shadow at the top stops. So we have a little highlight. Super simple. Nothing over the top. And we're going to do the same thing to the nose. But remember what I did with the berries, what I've done with everything. That highlight comes in from the edge. Oh, I missed. How did I do that? There we go. So I come in from the edge just a little. So that I have that highlight on the outside. So it just gives the nose a little bit more dimension. And I'm going to do the same thing to these black eyes, but I'm going to come in again from the edge just slightly. That white is thinned. So I'm leaving just a small gap. So you get that nice little highlight. And while I have the warm white, I'm going to strengthen and the white a little bit. It's a little more white, a little less of everything else. And I'm going to float in from the edge, come in from the edge, about an eighth of an inch, and put in a nice float of the warm white on that ginger, on that candy cane. And then I'm going to do that again, this time on the handle, the top portion right here, in from the edge, Nice float. And on the inside portion of the handle, again, come in from the edge. And come down. What's that? And I like a little highlight. We've done a lot of shading and whatnot on, on here. We're going to do a bit more on here. But we're going to put a highlight on that um, whipped cream. Jeez. English. So we're going to put a highlight on our whipped cream using that same warm white. But it's a strong float. And again, in from the edge. It's not going to be a super obvious highlight, but it's going to be there nonetheless. And then there's a couple of little spots down here. Let's grab a little bit of titanium white. I want something a little bit brighter. How many bottles of warm white do I have open? I have four bottles of white. They're all warm. So I just got the list from Facebook. Okay. There's 107 names just from Facebook. Awesome now I, sauce. Now I'm going to go to YouTube and get all the names from <laughs> whoever liked that. Yeah. So I'm just putting in a nice little highlight on that bottom curve there with a little bit of titanium white. I wanted it to be a little bit brighter. There we go. That's better. So all it does is just brighten that spot. It's not significantly noticeable that there's a color change, but it does brighten that spot a little bit. And then our next move is really going to enhance things. So I'm going to take a larger angled shader and a tiny amount, tiny amount of asphaltum. Heavily thinned. I'm going to make sure there's a lot of glaze, a lot of water in it. 
I don't want this color full strength. It needs to be very thin. And I'm going to float over my Bahama blue. Again, this color is heavily thinned. And it does dramatically change that blue. So wherever the Bahama blue is, you're going to put a float of that heavily thinned asphaltum. And so all of those little highlights that you just brightened now pop. He's coming together quite nicely. So I'm going to take a little, I almost forgot our berries here. I'm going to take a float of that thinned warm white and put a little float on our berry. Just like we did with the shadow, come in from the edge just slightly. C-shape float. And there is our highlight. And now we have to highlight these leaves. I always do this with a lighter value, high, high yellow green. I do like, uh, this is my new favorite. I do love this color, this sprout. So this is the one I'm using. If you don't have sprout, you can use margarita. You can use olive green. You could use yellow green. It's just to use a high yellow green, something with a lot of yellow in it is the ideal for this. So this is my highlight color. I just love how this looks. So I'm going to come out to that point on my brush or on my leaf, sorry. Nice little highlight. Look at that. So right up the center vein. And I like it on both sides because I think you need that little punch of that brighter green on there. It does a couple of things. It accentuates that shading really nicely and we get really nice definition. Look at the shape of those leaves. But it gives it nice texture and nice light. I love this green. So there's our highlight on those leaves. I'm going to do the same thing on these ones on the bottom. I don't worry about whether or not I bobble and go over top of that shading in the center simply because we're going to clean that up. We're going to brighten it anyway, deepen it, I should say. So I don't worry too much if my highlighting goes over it because I'm going to come back in and deepen it anyhow. But this green is just so vibrant and it's so pretty over top of that antique green. I have been using lush green, but I ran out <laughs> again. Um, what are the red marks on the forehead? Right here? Yeah. Oh, that's his hair. We haven't put that in yet. <laughs> he needs to have hair. We'll put that in in a bit. The reason I waited is because I want to do something fun with it. I didn't do it in the original, but I want to try it this way. So there's uh, Linda's wondering where you got the rolling pin pieces for the printable you put out. Oh, that is so fun. Uh, it's actually written in the pattern where those come from. Uh, my, my dear friend, Sheila, uh, designed just the most insanely cute rolling pin surfaces, but she is not cutting for the month of December. Uh, and so they are not on her website yet, um, but they will be in I have a couple of new designs that use them, so I haven't been entirely non-creative. <laughs> I've been busy, <laughs> but I did take some time this the last couple of weeks to design. I've designed a whole bunch of things. I just haven't had time to paint them, but... So the, the wheel is... Uh... Is loaded? 
It's a little full. Is it a little full? That's good. So total names is 296. Wow. Awesome. So there's 296 of you that could, uh, <laughs> yeah, that could win some. We have some, some fun stuff. We got some dynasty brushes. We have some stuff from Tombow. We have some art stuff bags. We have, I don't know what all's in there. Should we bring up the wheel? There's I'm a bunch up, of stuff. Yeah, I'm bring up, up the wheel. wheel. Uh, why isn't the wheel <laughs> coming up? I have no idea. Ooh. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not it. How about this one? Automatic? <laughs> no? <laughs> Where did the wheel go? Was it because it was minimized? There it is. Mm. Mati. Um, where? <laughs> what? Did you lose it? It's not showing up. I see Facebook on there. <laughs> what? <laughs> All I see is like Facebook little live button up in the corner. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> there it is. Good nice. heavens. Look at that. 296. Wow. Let me click that. Boys, oh boys, there's a whole bunch of names I've never seen before. And we're going to shuffle it up a bit. <laughs> Cindy Braden. Yeah. And the first winner is, drum roll, Cindy Braden. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Let's get the first winner. Thanks, Cindy Kaiser. That's, I do think it is cute. Hopefully we don't have any doubles on there. I didn't say <laughs> I have any doubles. Vicky Osmus. Awesome. Miss Vicky. I need a Sharpie. Vicky's a regular. Is she? Yes, she is. Oh, right on. She's always watching. It's kind of creepy. It's we. <laughs> not really. <laughs> we do this for that purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way you said it. Yeah. All right. We've got Vicky Osmus and you get sugar skulls. Oh, good. Um, was packing stuff up this week and. Getting packaging lately has been horrendous. Shake it and find out what it is. <laughs> I couldn't even begin to tell you. Oh, this is Tombo. Oh, that's There's Tombo. Tombo goodies in there. There you go. Yeah. So, Vicky, we've got some Tombo goodies coming your way. Plus, there's some other fun stuff in there. I'm always throwing stuff in them. So, this one is on its way to you this week. <laughs> and remove just keep it fair <laughs> just to keep it fair okay so he's got uh you're gonna do a couple more and then we'll do a couple at the end yeah yep mary zelenka right on mary zelenka mary zelenka so and just to let you guys know um if your name is drawn for one of these things, head over to the website at tracymoreau.net. Click on the little speech bubble in the lower right-hand corner and send us a message with your shipping information. And we will be sure to get your goodies out to you. We try to get them out within, you know, on the next mailing day. So that one's a pattern, I believe. Yeah, it's a pattern. And, and a surface. Yeah, I oh. think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's Mary Zelenka. That's Mary right So, on. yeah, we have, um, and then I've got, I think it's three. The, the art stuff bags aren't out yet, but. And last those one for now. Always have some fun stuff in them. Who do we got here? Hopefully no doubles. <laughs> Don't think so. <laughs> Nancy McNeil for Cardi. Right on. Nancy 
Nancy. <laughs> Neo. <laughs> the A R D. And the the art stuff bags have some Dynasty Black Gold brushes in them. We have three of those. We'll draw those at the end of the day. So we have some art yeah. stuff bags. I think that one's an art stuff bag too. Yeah. So Nancy's getting an art stuff bag. Yep. There's definitely a bag in there. Yep. Uh, and I have three more art stuff bags. Oh, three some, more. Yep, three more. They're not packed yet, but we have those for uh -huh. the next three. Those ones are fun. They've got some Dynasty Black Gold. Is uh, some of our gel pens are in there. Um, there's some Tombow goodies in there as well, and then some other stuff. We always throw extra stuff in because well, we like giving stuff away. So, all right, back to painting. <laughs> yep, back to painting. So this little guy is well on his way. So we're going to add, um, I finished off these highlights on there, but we're going to deepen the shadows on these leaves, crisp them up, clean them up so they're nice and sharp. So I'm gonna do that with a little bit of plantation pine. And that little float just really defines, gives these leaves nice definition just by cleaning up that little center vein, it sharpens them up, gives those leaves a really nice look. And it's a simple float. I say simple, a lot of people really struggle with floating. So I'm, I'm, I'm careful about using that term simple. Uh, floating is something that takes a tremendous amount of practice. It's one of those things you get better at with time because you learn how the brush hold how much water you need in the brush how much um how much pressure how much paint how to blend it all of those things just come with practice so if you don't get them absolutely perfect the first time don't beat yourself up over it it takes time to get those things down so i've got my shading on my leaves done i've got all the shading on my handles done um, one of the things I like to do, it, you saw me do it with this blue here. I like toning things. I like bringing that asphaltum down into other places on my piece. It just brings it all together. So again, I thin that color. So whenever I've got a shadow, like I do here with this, um, Prussian blue, I like going over it with just a, a weak float of that asphaltum. All it does is just tone things, brings them all into line so that everything has sort of has that same feel. So I like to go over those shaded areas with a, just a weak float of asphaltum, just brings everything together. So I'm going to dry this really well, make sure all of those shadows are dry. And then we're going to add, start adding all of those fun little details because that's what sort of brings all of this to life all of these little highlights and whatnot will suddenly come to life. So that means I'm gonna have to break out my extra long detail liner. And mine is looking pretty peaky these days. I had to glue the ferrule back on the other day because it just, it's seen better days. So I'm going to thin out a little bit of that. Remember that green that we used to highlight all our little leaves? I'm going to thin some of that out, a little bit of glaze in there, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of white just to make it a touch more opaque. So now I've got my liner loaded. And this is where I get to stroke in those stems to my leaves. And then I'm going to, I love doing this. I want to add some nice little detailed edges to my leaves. So I very gently, very carefully outline my leaves with that heavily thinned color. Does not have to be perfectly on the edge of the leaf. It can go off. It can be very thin. 
it's also a chance for you to add like a little swirly bit to the end of those leaves. Remember a little curly cue at the end? I like the, that little detail. Just gives the leaves a nice airy feeling. And I'm going to do the same thing to these ones right here. Hey, buddy. Gizmo came for a visit. Yeah. Gizmo has become quite talkative. So that little bit of a highlight, it just makes these leaves a little more interesting and it can clean up a whole bunch of things. So nice little definition, little flips and curls at the ends of the leaves. That works. I like that. And then I also, I like to take a little bit of that green and just add, you know, the occasional little swirl somewhere is never a bad thing. So while I have this brush out, I'm going to get into my white, pick up a little bit of that white and we're going to add a dot that light impact point to each of the berries never heard a bowling ball get thrown upstairs and then that thinned white is also going to do the highlight on our candy canes and on that peppermint stick there so come in from the edge of that white float just a little and put a stroke of that white. And you're going to do the same thing here. <laughs> Gizmo is filling in for soot. Yep. <laughs> and then remember our little hearts down here. These ones get that little highlight as well. And do that with a little stroke and a little dot. And then the eyes on our little fella here. So that little dot goes on the upper left. And then don't forget the nose. It gets one too. And I always come in just slightly from the edge of that highlight, that floated highlight. So you get that nice bright light impact point. So we have all of our highlights in place. I'm going to dry this real quick so that I'm not smearing all these little dots and st strokes. Make sure they're all good and dry because I'm going to, if anybody's going to do it, it'll be me. I'll put my hand in it. Pardon me. There we go. He is cute. I do like him. So remember those three little dots at the top. I'm going to take my rigor and a little bit of warm white, and I'm going to put three little comma strokes right there for his hair. Jeez, could I have messed that up any better? There we go. Cheapers. And I'm going to dry that. I should have done this earlier, but I wanted to do it at the end because going to float a little shadow underneath the whipped cream and over top of that frosting right there just oof. and while I'm at it just deepen that float a little bit good grief I could mess up the Lord's Prayer today there we go Ooh, I do have a bunch of devils 
Oh, I got somebody here who's got triplicates. How did you do that? I don't know. Silly bunny. So I'm going to dry this really well. And now I get to go around and I need to set back a few things. So right here, I want to tuck that little spray of holly behind the mug. So I'll do that with a little float. And I'm going to clean up a couple of things with a float of soft black. This is where I like to clean things up a little. So crisp up the edges of my mug with a float of soft black down here. This is just where you get to clean up a few things so that he sits there nice and sharp edged. Just deepen a few little things here and there. There we go. And we are ready to work on our lettering. So, or actually no, not our lettering yet. We need to do our snow. But I think I will leave that. I'll do the lettering first and then I'll do the snow because I'll put my hands in it. I know I will. I know this because I did it the first time. So I'm going to clear off my palette here because I've got quite the mess. And I oh, see what I mean? Two seconds. I managed to get paint all over me. <laughs> so the lettering up here. Now, in this first one, I used raw sienna to base my gingerbread fellow, and I in this one, I used the honey brown. The lettering up here is honey brown, so I'm going to use that if I can find it. That's raw sienna. There it is. Okay, so I have honey brown. Denise Van Newkirk. Hi, Denise. And Harolyn Newell. Hi, Harolyn. Thanks for joining us. So I've got Honey Brown. I'm going to work with the number two rigger for this larger lettering at the top. And I'm going to thin this out with a little bit of that Joe Sonia's glaze, the fast dry glaze. I want this to come off the brush fairly smoothly. And this is a fairly opaque color, so I can thin it quite heavily without too much worry. The nice thing about working with this rigger is that I can press down, open it up. Look how it fills that space really nicely. And then I can bring that brush back up onto the chisel edge so that I get a nice sharp line. And I'm going to do the same thing right here. Press down till it opens up and then bring it back up onto the chisel edge. This brush is a mess. I know I've got another number two in here. There we go. I think my, my, that one is seen better days. <laughs> there we go. I love my riggers and they're ideal for doing this type of lettering. Now the nice part about this 
particularly on a piece like this, is that you don't really have to get it absolutely perfect. In fact, it kind of takes on a life of its own a little when, when there's a little bit of wobbles and bobbles in it. It just, it works for this type of piece. Is that honey brown for the lettering? I am using honey brown for the lettering. So it's Usually I would try to make a little bit of contrast from the lettering, but um, because I goofed, then it would make the lettering a little too dark if I went with the raw sienna. So I'm just going to stick with the honey brown. And one coat is generally all you're going to need for this. Super simple. Might have to come back. I don't need to fill that space a bit more. Now the font that I used for this is um, one that I purchased. And it's called Mag Magnoli. Mang, I can't even pronounce it now. But it is one I got. I buy a lot of fonts from fontbundles.com. I buy the licenses so that I can use them without stepping on anybody's toes. Uh, there's some, uh, Font Bundles actually has some really talented designers working with them. And it, it does take a designer to create these fonts. I hate using sienna and umber. They are grainy and won't mop well. No. Yeah, I always struggle. For, it's always a struggle for me. I always find that, well, if you're finding the paint is grainy, then it might have either frozen or it's very old. Um, and umber is notorious for it in the first place. Uh, so a raw umber has a tendency to be very flat and lifeless. So I generally stay more to either the burnt versions, raw umber. I do like raw sienna. I love. But umbers are intended to flatten colors, to take some of the life out of them. So I shy away because I like my colors nice and bright. If I want to flatten them, I'll flatten them another way. So then I can use the chisel edge of this brush meaning I can flatten it out and then you just use the sharp edge of the brush to do those fine lines. And if you're not comfortable doing that, then by all means, don't be afraid to use a liner brush. It's not a sin. Use what works for you. And I kind of like the, the more rustic feel of this lettering. It works. And especially since we're going to shade it and highlight it. So there's our cocoa. The only thing I want to make sure is that I have a nice uniform finish on these. I don't want them to look thin in any, any place. They should look fairly uniform. I'm happy with that. So we're going to come up to this one. I'm going to switch to a zero rigger for this lettering. It's a little bit smaller. 
and so I want the brush to be a little more controlled. So I'm switching to a zero for this one, and the color that I'm using is warm white. So a little bit of warm white. And this one's going to have a little more of a distressed appearance when we do this, and we're going to shade this as well. So we don't really have to worry about it getting it absolutely perfect. It's okay. So I'm using a zero. I'm going to flatten it out. Chisel edge. Bob needs a zombie girlfriend. A zombie girlfriend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, even zombies get lonely, apparently. Sure. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> This is just a fun font. I wanted something pretty, but nothing too fancy. This is always the quietest part of this when we're doing this lettering because everybody holds their breath. You gotta breathe through it. If you don't breathe, your hands shake. Rigger brush is a new one for me. Haven't purchased one yet, but definitely sounds like I need to add it to my collection. Well, a rigger is very different than a liner brush, although they look similar. It looks like a script, but it isn't. If you look at a script, this is a script, comes to a nice sharp point. When you press it down, it forms a teardrop shape. So it's round on the end. And although a rigger is also in a round ferrule, just like a, a script is, the hairs are arranged so that when you put pressure on them, they form a chisel edge like a flat. So that's why I can get these nice straight edges because it forms a squared off edge. So it's easy to paint lettering when you've got a nice square edge to work with. <laughs> Molly Ann says, I'm holding my breath watching you. <laughs> there we go. And then you can use, like I said before, you can use that chisel edge to do all of those little fine connecting lines to the lettering. But if you're not comfortable using the rigger, by all means, use the liner to do all those connecting lines if it makes it easier for you. It just takes a little bit of practice getting that brush loaded, learning how to get the brush loaded, and then when to push down and when to release the pressure on the brush. But there we go. And then in between, we've got that little N. So I'm going to dry this really well. Can I ask you a favor? What's that? Can you go get me a glass of juice, please? Sure. Thank you. Cranberry. Yep, cranberry will be fine. Just a little water in it. So we've got our lettering done. I do like to grab an eraser and find my, I love this. This is my uh, 
just a couple little spots. I'm going to clean up some graphite before I get too involved here. I don't like graphite lines. And I do love this thing. I always find that when the graphite's still there, the lettering always looks a little untidy. And then when you go in and you clean up all those little graphite lines, all of that untidiness goes away. And then your lettering looks so much nicer. And I do love this little Tombow eraser for this because you can clean them up, target, you know, very small little bits. And it's soft, so it doesn't hurt the surface. But those little graphite lines, they just go away. On a dark surface, I use my black one. I like my black uh, Tombow eraser or my um, Factus Black. Either one of those works really, really well. So we've got our lettering done. So we're going to add a little bit of shading and highlighting to our lettering just to bring it all into line. Um, it is going to use a small brush. So I'm going to use my um, 3 8 angle. If you're more comfortable with a quarter inch, by all means, go ahead. But I like my 3 8 I don't usually paint with anything much smaller than that. I just am partial to my 3 8 angle. So a little bit of Ishvaltum and a little bit of Bahama Blue. I like the Bahama Blue because it carries the color from down here. So a little bit of Bahama Blue. And we're going to do a little bit of shading. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, I needed a drink. <laughs> Me and my cranberry juice. I love my cranberry juice. So we're going to start our shading with the uh, the lettering on that cocoa and we're going to use a little bit of asphaltum and we're going to put a shadow at the base of the lettering the nice part is that we're just going to gently tap it in so it's only going to come about halfway up the letter it's not a strong shadow but it's there little bit and because we're working in such a tight spot you have to take a little bit of care to stay inside the line so you don't want to have asphaltum everywhere we don't want to bar of it across the bottom so we're just going to very carefully put a float at the bottom of the letter and just walk it up to about the halfway mark, about halfway up the letter. Doesn't have to be a perfect flow, doesn't have to be neat and tidy. It's just to give a little texture and a little shape to these letters. That's all. So it's not, not something you have to fiddle with too much. There we go. So we've got a shadow in. And then my highlight color for this, I'm going to use a little bit of that almondine that we use to highlight. So again, a little float, nothing extravagant, nothing over the top. Just going to bring it up to the top of the letter. Oof, a little too strong, I think. And just like the shadow we're going to walk that down a little bit I'm going to blend it out a bit more so it does not have to be a neat and tidy float just try to keep it within the confines of the letter it's just to brighten the top of the letters a little bit And I bring it about one third of the way down. Just like so. 
And that's all that that needs. Nothing major. We are going to come back to that Bahama blue. We're going to do the same thing to that white lettering. Stay inside the confines of the letter the best you can. It's just a little bit of that Bahama blue. Not a lot. Don't go whole hog with it. You don't need to. It's just a little bit at the bottom of the letter. And bring it up about halfway. Easy peasy. So I'm going to dry this really quick and we're going to start playing with some embellishments. So I'm going to grab my uh, snowflake stencil. There's two different ones you can use, either the M42 or the M54. Either one of those snowflake stencils will do fine. I like the... Um, the M54 because it's got some really tiny snowflakes and I like the M42 because it's got some more elaborate snowflakes. So because we're going to be using some small delicate and detailed ones I decided on the 42. I kind of married to this stencil. I like this one. So I'm going to pop that snowflake in place. I'm going to tape it down. You didn't dot your eye. I didn't. I will. I didn't transfer it. That's why I didn't dye it. Uh, the name of the stencil for the background was? It's M277. It's called Knit. Pearl? Yeah, Knit Pearl. Knit yep. Pearl. So I need a clean stencil brush. Do I have one? Yeah, I do. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white stencil brush. The brush should be almost dry. Circular fashion, change directions. We just want a nice even application of warm white. I don't want these fully opaque. I kind of want them to be a little dusky, frosty even. So don't worry if they're not absolutely opaque. It doesn't matter. So, oh, yes, I love that. And then I'm going to pull this one over here. Same thing. Don't worry if it's not fully opaque. doesn't need to be. Just like so. I like it when they're almost transparent. You know, they're more delicate. Lovely. And then there's a variety of other shapes in here that I really like. So I'm going to pull a couple of those in. Again, I'm not worried about whether or not they're fully opaque. It doesn't matter. I kind of like them soft. So I've got three in the original, but I would like to bring, I think, a little snowflake down here. So that makes four, so I gotta stick with an odd number, so I need a fifth. I'm just not sure where I'll put it, but maybe down down here somewhere. Let's see, what have we got? Oh, there's a nice one. It's a little on the lacy side, so let's tuck him down here. It's delicate. There. Oh snowflake. I love snowflakes. So, I've got a few snowflakes in place. Now, I took these wonderful things. I love these. So, I chose a couple of those. I got a couple of different sizes. And then I'm going to use some of my little, little ones because I like these. These are fun. I'll show you the, these things are super tiny and they're individual. So let me show you how I painted these. So you're going to hold it like this. And you're going to take a little bit of white paint on your fingertip. Oopsie, <laughs> get back here. There we go. 
and I just tapped a little on with my finger. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. I just love these little guys. I just think they're just flipping and awesome. They're so uh, cute. Ellie Purcell says, my package just arrived. Thank you for the surprise. Oh, you're very welcome. We always like put little surprises in. <laughs> so the fun part about these is I just rolled a little bit of white paint on them. And while the paint was wet, I just sprinkled them with a little glamour dust. So they've got a little bit of sparkle. And then you can cut them out individually. You got an abstract ginger man, <laughs> gingerbread man on your palate. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I love these. Now I like the fact that these, uh, these sets come with so many varieties of snowflakes. So there's four different types right there. And I'm going to just snip them off with my good scissors. Yeah, they're going to end up right in the paint where they don't need to be. Because <laughs> I'm, luck I'm lucky that way. So I've got four nice big ones, and then I've got a couple of these ones that I just love. The thing you have to remember, these are made out of chipboard, so they are paper. And so they tend to be a little on the fragile side. So when you're cutting them out, take a little care with them. Now I have my favorite glue somewhere here. It's this one, Eileen's Tacky. It's the best stuff since cookies. So I'm going to put a little bit on the back of my snowflake. I love this stuff because it dries nice and clear. Of course, it helps if you actually get glue on it. I had one of those goober things oozing out of it. There we go. Goober things. Well, I, I don't know what you'd call it, but goober works. So, little snowflake there. These are just so stinking cute. Oh my god, the glitter. I can see it from here. <laughs> Get over yourself. What I love about these is that it just adds a little extra dimension to things. Makes things a bit more interesting. How did you manage to get that to fall? Uh, don't ask me. It landed glue side up. Never happens. That's weird. <laughs> it's amazing. It, like, For me. It disobeyed the laws of physics. <laughs> I have that effect. <laughs> so I've got a few. I think, what, one more? Uh, you're out of stock on the snowflakes. I am. When they, will they be back? Yeah. I They should be here tomorrow. Should. Should. Yep. Completely dependent on... On Canada Post. <laughs> so there we go. I love how those look. I just, I, they're so fun. And you can get carried away. <laughs> I was tempted to just, you know, glue a whole bunch on because I just love how that looks. They're fun. So put that aside. I'm going to give that a second. Uh, those are, you got the snowflakes from who? Southern Ridge Trading. Southern Ridge Trading. Yeah. And their website is chipboard.ca? Yes. There we go. So I'm going to get out my fugly brush, my handy dandy fugly brush. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white. I'm going to thin it a little bit, some water in there, because we need snow. And so I am fairly generous with the snow. So I'm spattering with the white. Just a little bit of warm white. Like how stinking cute is this? I love it. Uh, the stencil for the background is only available uh, at tracymoreau.net. 
And SandyMcTeer.com. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Sandy McTeer, right. McTeer Designs has it as well. Yeah. So SandyMcTeer.com or TracyMoreau.net. Mm-hmm. And that was M2-77. And the Snowflake stencil was... M254 or M242. Yeah. Snowflakes. Snowflakes 1. Yep. And then Snowflakes 2. Yep. So to finish this little guy off, I don't like um, raggedy edges. Like, it's painted, yes, but it, it just doesn't look that great. I do like my back finished. So I take my gold paint pen. I just like, I finish all my ornaments this way, decorations, etc. this way. So take your gold paint pen and just finish your edges like that. The nice part is that if you want a little of that gold, just tip the pen over and it'll give you a nice little fine bead of gold on the front of your ornament, like so. This is just an easy way to finish off your ornaments and your decorations. It gives them a very professional finish. Oops. God. Until you do that. Until you do that. Then you look like a complete hose. There we go. Sometimes I can actually look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, can you varnish over those paint pens? These ones, yes, absolutely. Yep. I will take this out to the garage once the paint is completely dry. And I'll probably put two to three coats, light coats, of Decorart Matte Spray over it. It is a Christmas decoration. Two to three coats of Decorart Matte Spray is plenty to protect it. Um, but if you want to varnish it, um, then hold off on putting all your little snowflakes on if you want to use traditional varnish. Varnish it, then adhere them. That's the best advice I can give you. So there is our cookies and cocoa. I'm going to grab my gold paint pen here and put my scribbletcher on here, maybe. Paint pen is deco color. Yes, this one is... A deco color. These ones are made by Marvi Ashudo. Or Shuda, I should say. I love these. They're a lot less expensive than some of the other ones out there. I love the metallic. They have a great metallic finish. They dry quickly. They're easy to use and they're affordable. They don't cost you an arm and a leg. And you can Just get them on them. Amazon. And you can get them on Amazon. What was that? My watch. Ding. Ding. And they come in a, in a bunch of different sizes. Um, this one is, uh, this is a chisel. It's just a smaller version, which is handy for doing a bunch of different things. And then there is the uh, extra fine, which is this one. This is a new one. And I love these. The extra fine has that little tiny point on it so which makes them ideal i've got static electricity and everything is sticking to me so give them a good shake and then prime them by pumping them on the palette hopefully it'll work it just takes a little time that's all there we go get that gold paint down to the the point. Good gravy. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I like these ones for signing my work. And like I said, they dry very quickly. And you get a set of, th of three of these for about uh, $12. So you get a chisel one in gold. Uh, the extra fine in gold and then a silver one. They're fantastic. Were you going to use puffy paint on the icing? Yep, we're not done yet. We're oh, not done. I shouldn't have signed it, but I did. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, I wanted to get all of this stuff glued in before I do this part. So remember this. This is just acrylic paint. And I added a little bit of uh, heavy gel medium to it. So it's a little bit thicker. And I put it into my little squeeze bottle. I better make sure it works. There we go. And so my paint is a little bit thicker than it ordinarily would be. And I'm just going to add a little dimension to that icing that I had painted on there. And I just based it in with a little bit of warm white. Just like so. What I love about it is it's icing. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. <laughs> I like it when it's not perfect. I saw that on a t-shirt. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> Who was that? Linda Safranco. <laughs> yes, Linda Safranco. She, <laughs> she turned a sticker that we had made into... Oops. Into a t-shirt. So I've got this paint on here. And it's because it's got that gel medium in it, it's going to take a little longer to dry, which is why I wanted to leave it for the end. Because with my luck, if I have to do anything else to it, I'm going to put my hands in this paint. And I kind of like that little extra dimension that this gives, that little bit of height. It does rest a little bit, but it does give it some nice... A little bit of elevation so it looks like icing. Ooh. What? I can somewhat answer this question. Okay. Um, when using MDF board, mm -hmm. I glue on metal hooks. Yep. I've had some fall off bringing paint with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I use Gorilla Glue on boards already painted with acrylic. What's wrong? And my answer is, you're binding to the paint, not the surface. Yeah. Yep, that's the issue. So the, the, the glue is doing its job. It's sticking to the surface you put it on, but it's not actually adhering to the wood surface. So ideally, put your hook on before you paint the back. Yep. Especially with MDF. <laughs> Especially with MDF, yes. So I've got wet paint. And now I need some glamour dust. So I try to be as uh, circumspect with this as I possibly can. So I don't want to have 10 tons of this stuff everywhere. So I'm, I try to sprinkle it just in that space. The devil's dandruff. Devil's dandruff, Renee, and it does not like glitter. I hate glitter. It gets everywhere. Yes, it does. It gets in places it shouldn't. <laughs> It, it makes trips to the gynecologist a lot more fun, though. <laughs> Just saying. So, a little sprinkle of glamour dust on top of that wet dimensional paint. Like I said, I didn't have any dimensional paint, so I made some. I just mixed a little bit of warm white with a little bit of heavy gel medium or thickening medium. Any one of those will work. And then while it's still wet... I sprinkle a whole bunch of glamour dust into it and then tap the surface this helps seat the glitter into the paint and then just let it sit for a few minutes if I try to tap it off now I might end up making the paint run or drop off so I'm gonna let it sit for a few minutes and while we're waiting for that, we'll get Renee to spin the wheel. The wheel. Back off. No. <laughs> Showing my childhood. <laughs> Spinning the wheel. Three, two, one. <laughs> Who do we got? Who do yes, we got? it's cranberry juice and water over ice in a plastic wine glass. Jan! <laughs> Just Jan. Just Jan? Jan. <laughs> <laughs> J 
Jan. Jan, make sure you go to the website. Oh, she's won before. I know she has. <laughs> yeah. Just go to the website. And let me know. <laughs> Send us a message with your shipping information, please. Jan. <laughs> One. And two. Yep. So we've got three art stuff bags going out to these winners this afternoon. And they're filled with a bunch of goodies. We've got some uh, Dynasty Black Gold brushes and uh, some Tombow goodies as well. And Kathy Baldwin. How is my girl Kathy? Kathy has been bu busy teaching uh, designs with... Uh, a lovely lady on the West Coast. She's amazing. Sure miss seeing you, Kath. Kathy Baldwin. And remove. A lot of new faces. Yeah. A lot of new names. New names. Oh, goodness. Monty Dersham? Dersham? Monty Dersham. Monty Nurse. Right on. Monty's won before too. Have they? Yes, she has. Monty, my dear. She's a regular. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. Yep, I'm just, I'm anxious to tap this off. That's why. <laughs> And back to the painting. Back to painting. So I'm just going to tap this off. I've got a bin right here. And so we have nice shimmery. I love the sparkle. The glamour dust gives. <laughs> now, I'm going to let this dry really well. And then I'll take a mop brush or some soft brush to brush away any of the excess glitter that's still stuck on the surface. Um, just so that what remains is only in the paint and not everywhere else before I varnish it. I just think that this is such a fun little project and I love a little bit of glitter. Not... A ton. But that same, all of those same techniques that we used in there are also used in these little ornament tags. And these are so simple and they're so much fun. And I just love that little snowflake embellishment. I just think they're super cute. And that little bit of dimensional paint with that glitter in, they, they just work. And if a little glitter escapes and gets varnished onto it, it's not a big um, deal. I have a question. Shoot. Will we be live Christmas Eve? It lands on a Saturday? It lands on a Saturday. Wow. I don't know. Should we go live? Maybe we should. Maybe we should? Yeah. But they're going to be with their families. That's true. And I'll be with mine. Hmm? I don't know. We, I don't we know. should let them choose. Maybe they don't want to be with their families. <laughs> 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 maybe, they want to be with us. <laughs> maybe they want to be with us that's true um i don't know we could i mean i have no problem with it saturday is what about uh, new year's eve oh yeah new year's eve too Land oh we're definitely going live new year's eve Eesh. definitely yes please no one's doing anything at noon that's true. Everybody's That's true. done their Christmas shopping. That's true. Then. I have no family on this whole island. What island? How do you not have family on an island? <laughs> it's usually how you can't get away from your family. <laughs> no, you deserve time off. Oh, that's sweet. It is sweet. But you know where I spend my time off? <laughs> um, <laughs> right here. <laughs> Here's the funny part. I work Christmas morning. Yeah. So, but only for six hours. So. Yeah. I made sure I'm home for Christmas dinner. 
Excellent. Christmas morning, I don't get to open gifts in the morning. So. We mm. we open them in the evening. All the gingerbread you showed today. I have 15 people coming home for Christmas Eve. Oh Won't my. be able to watch. Oh my goodness. The great thing is we do record them. Yes, we do. I got the wrong camera on. Yep. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> we do record them so you can come back and enjoy it with us at a later time. Yep. So we'll make that decision as we get closer to it. How's that? <laughs> yeah. We'll, yep. we'll fill you in probably next Saturday. Yep. We'll fill you in next Saturday. Let you know what's going on. Yeah. But yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I He was a kind of a spur of the moment thing that just sort of pulled together really nicely. I was actually playing with the ornaments and then ended up doing this. And I just really loved how Did he you turned out. Did the ornaments at all? Yeah. We were just talking about these little guys. I love these guys. They're cute. They're going on the tree when we're done here. Okay. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, I had a lot of fun playing with them and putting them together. <laughs> and of course, it's, you know, like kindergarten. I get to cut out little snowflakes and glue stuff on and it made me happy. So, um, And you finger painted. And I finger painted. <laughs> <laughs> yep, finger painted snowflakes. So uh, um, have a little fun with this. I, what I love about this type of thing is it can go on almost anything. You could put it on watercolor, paper. If you want to get the grandkids involved, photocopy it out on a couple of sheets. Take the line drawing and let the kids color it. Give them a handful of crayons or some markers and let them go to town. They can create some really fun and interesting Christmas cards or just decorations to hang on the fridge. Let them have at her. Or concerning. <laughs> 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 but in general, it, it's a pretty easy design to paint. You can have fun embellishing it. You can work with really basic techniques, just blocking in color. You don't have to go to the extreme that we went to today by putting in all the shading and highlighting and details and whatnot. The fun part about doing this thing is that you can do it with whatever you have on hand. That's one of the reasons that I stick to surfaces that are fairly utilitarian and fairly simple. Because they can be replaced with something fairly simple. <laughs> so if you've got cardstock, if you've got watercolor paper or canvas board or whatever you have at home, you can replace it, this surface, with something that you already have uh, very easily and make it work. So don't feel that you're obligated to use precisely what I have because you are not. And uh, use your imagination. You can have a lot of fun creating all sorts of really cool things just with what you find around the house or what you find at your local dollar store. So that is it for us for this week. Thanks so much for coming and joining us. We have a great time doing these and we're so happy to have you with us. What? What are we doing next week? Flowers. We are painting orchids. Painting orchids. Painting orchids. Orchids. Yep. There you go. Pattern will be up on Monday. Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right, guys, that's it for us this week. Thanks again for joining us. If you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. Hit the big red subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so that you know when we go live every week. We do stream both at Facebook and YouTube. So if you're not on Facebook, you can find us on YouTube and vice versa. So... <laughs> Thanks again for joining us. We love you. And please stay safe. Bye. Rock and roll. <laughs> Pet your dog. Pet your puppy. <laughs>